What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into all files and folders that have been added inside our Laravel project skeleton. You want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. Now if we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and close off all folders that we have, you'll see that there are quite some folders and files that we actually haven't talked about. Now this is a great starting point once you're new to Laravel, but you are free to do whatever you want inside a skeleton Laravel application. Let's walk through all files and folders and you'll see what goes on inside of them and behind the scenes of a user interface. The first folder is the app folder. Let's open it. This is where the core of your application will go. Think about your models, controllers, commands that you create through Artisan. Once you create stuff like form request and mailing from the command line interface, a new folder will be created inside the HTTP directory called forms where your request will be stored. Now the HTTP directory is the place where you store your new controllers, middlewares and requests from the browser. The second folder is the bootstrap folder, which has nothing to do with the bootstrap CSS framework, but it comes from bootstrapping the self start process. In here, you will find one file called app.php, which is a file that will automatically load the classes to boot up the start of your application. We've also got the cache directory, which contains framework generated files for performance optimization, such as the route and services cache files. Then we have the config folder, where you find all the configuration files. Every file that is located inside this folder uses the same structure. If we open the database.php file, you'll see that it starts off by returning an array where our default database connection right here will be grabbed from the .env file, so the .env method, where it will search for a variable called db underscore connection. If that doesn't exist, it has a default value of MySQL. If we scroll down, you'll find a complete section with all database drivers that we can use. We got SQLite, MySQL, PGSQL, SQL Server, and this works pretty much in the same way as the database connection, where it will search for an environment variable, as you could see, let's say for the password, and it has a default value, which is the second parameter of empty. Now next to the comic directory, we have our database directory, where you will find everything that's related to databases. We've got our factories, where you store factory classes that allow you to build fake data for your models, We've got the migration directory, where migrations are stored, which allows you to create a table inside your database. And we've got the cdis directory, where you will have cdir files that allows you to include dummy data to the database. Then we have our lang folder, which stores all of your application language files. At the moment, we only have English. Then we have our public directory, which is the main entry point of all requests coming in. The index.php file, can be seen as the front controller that kicks off the bootstrapping process and routes all requests in the correct way. Besides that, you can store files that are open to the public. Think about images, style sheets, scripts, and so on. The resources directory consists of all files that are needed for other scripts. Think about your views, CSS files, and JavaScript. Then we have the routes folder, which speaks for itself because we can store all writes right here, but in separate files. Inside the API.php file, you store files that uses the route service provider that are placed inside the API middleware group. The channels.php file is the place where to register all your event broadcasting channels. The console.php file is the location where you define all your closure based console commands. And finally, the web.php file, which we will be using most of the time inside this course because we will place all web routes right here. Now inside the storage folder, you'll find a couple other directories. The first one is the app directory, where you will store files that have been generated by your application. Think about PDFs that are created inside the checkout process. We've got the debug bar that we pulled in as a composer package, the framework directory where you store stuff like cache, and the logs directory that has a laravel.log file inside of it, which consists of all the logs that you have inside your current application. Once you create stuff like unit tests and integration tests, you'll store them inside the test directory. And the last directory that we have is the vendor directory. Once you install a dependency through Composer, it will be stored right here. 
If you are using Git right now or even later on, keep in mind that this file will be excluded from pushing to Git. The main reason why is simply because Composer is expected to run as a part of your deploy process on any server, meaning that once you try to deploy your project, you need to perform a Composer install. Now let's close it off. And the next file is the editor convic. And this is basically a file for your text editor such as Visual Studio Code, which gives instructions about Laravel's coding standards. As you can see, it has an indent size of four. It's defining the char set, for example, and even whether to trim or trail white spaces, which has been set to true. Inside a Laravel project, we will be using something which is called an environment variable quite a lot, which can be found inside the .env file. An environment variable is pretty strong because it can be used throughout your entire application. Also, another quick note, the .env file will not be pushed to Git since these are credentials for your own application. But the .env.example, on the other hand, is a template of the .env file that each environment should duplicate to create its own. Now this file will be pushed to Git. Then we have the Git attributes and the Git ignore, which are both Git configuration files. We have the style ci.yaml, which is a YAML file that has some configuration stuff inside of it. We've already touched on it, but Laravel uses a tool called Artisan that has a lot of built-in command line actions that we can perform to create files. That all goes through this Artisan file. We have our composer.json and composer.log file. Both of them are configuration files for Composer. The composer.json file is editable, while the composer log, as the name implies, is not because it's locked. These files have a lot of information about PHP dependencies that are being used inside the project. Right inside of the require section right here, you'll see a package that we required in development mode, which is the Laravel debug bar, which is using a version of 3.6. Now the package.json file is pretty similar to the composer file, but it's used for front-end assets in the system. We'll be using a node manager called npm in the series, which is a JavaScript-based dependency. The PHP unit.xml file is an XML file that contains configurations for PHP unit, which is one of the most used Laravel tools for testing. The readme file is a Git-based markdown file, which we won't be needing. And finally, we have our webpack.mix.js file, which is an optional configuration file when working with Laravel Mix. You will basically define how your frontend should be compiled and processed. This was it for this video where we went over the project directory structure of a Laravel skeleton project. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.